Time for another potato reveal. This time it's Cara potatoes from my own saved seed. And correct me if I'm wrong, Brendan, but I think this is my third year for growing Cara. First year was a gift of seed potatoes, and the next two years have been potatoes that I've saved myself. Soil's very wet from that rain that we had, and they haven't dried out because they're they're not using any of the moisture. They're, they've died back completely. I don't know if I said or not, there were three seed potatoes in this. There's one of the seed potatoes. Potato twin, I guess. Never seen that before. Two potatoes have grown together. Oh, they're separate. Huh? They're sort of grown together. Hmm. It isn't often that I find all three seed potatoes, but I had these ones. been watching some fantastic results. Uh, one in particular was Woody. I think there were 35 liter plastic tubs or pots or whatever you want to call them that he used. And obviously an excellent mix and man that knows what he's doing growing potatoes. But the yield that he got out of two seed potatoes in, in a 35 gallon plastic container was incredible. So I have ordered myself five uh, 10 gallon, I suspect that's 10 US gallons, plastic containers to give it a try next year. That calculates out, I think, if you're using the US gallon to something like 37 liters, so roughly the same uh, size container that Woody was using. But I'm wondering, because of the dry weather that we had and trying to keep these watered, particularly in uh, smart pots, these fabric pots. It's very hard to keep them watered. They dry out very quickly. So next year I'm going to try both the fabric pots and I'm going to do five of the large plastic containers. So that means it'll rain all next summer and the ones in the plastic containers will rot. Anyway, I will put the weight, I'll weigh these after I get to the house on the kitchen scales and put the weight on the screen here for you to see, but not a huge haul. Pretty uniform in size, not very big, but I love the Cara potatoes, so I'm looking forward to, to having some this evening, Brendan. Well, this is uh, potato reveal number two for this video. It's been so long ago now that I can't remember if I told you the date on the first one or not, but this is uh, September 18th today and I'm getting around to doing another reveal. Uh, and these are Ian Notkin's favorite potato. I had exactly one seed potato of Windsor Delicatas, uh, which I think is a um, fingerling type potato. We'll know here in a second anyway. I always get excited when I see a few and then I discover that's the only few that's there. But we'll see. Yeah, nice little potato, not uh, 
the one he was expecting for a thing going, but I guess I was expecting something a bit different from that. Ian wasn't able to uh, find any seed potatoes this year of this particular variety. And, uh, I just happened to receive one in one of the uh, you know, sort of variety packs from the company that I bought my seed potatoes from. They would send uh, four different kinds in a variety pack, one, one seed potato of each. This is turning out quite nicely, considering it was just one little, little seed potato. And that's supposed to be a small potato anyway, I think, so I don't have to be too concerned about the size. One that they should be bigger. Thing going, which I think indicates that they're supposed to be a smallish potato. I guess that seems to be it. I don't see anything else. Sometimes I do these reveals and I get back on the computer editing the video and I can see from the from the video that I'm watching where I missed one, I can back out and get it. That's happened a couple of times. So that's not bad. Uh, the Linza Delicatess. They look to uh, be a nice smooth skin potato in, yeah, no, no scab or anything at all. I'm looking forward to trying some of those with, with dinner this evening. I'll put a, a weight on the screen, as I've said before. I, I weigh my potatoes uh, on the kitchen scales when I get back to the house. Before I explain what I'm up to here, I just want to say to Ian Nocton, you're absolutely right. The Linzer Delicatas are an excellent potato. I, I just had a few last night uh, steamed. I steamed them in my rice cooker. If you can see this thing off to the side here, that's the rice cooker. Um, and they were very good. I had a couple left over cold and tried those with some mayonnaise. I think they're going to be an excellent salad potato. So when I cook some more, I think I'll make a potato salad out of them. Anyway, what I'm up to today, Harold from the uh, Old wor Worker Guy channel in Ontario mentioned that uh, when they do their dehydrating, they do it in their oven. I've heard of other people doing it and I've never tried it. My stove and oven are propane gas and it does have a low setting that goes to 170 degrees. I think Harold said they do theirs at 180 or something. So, you know, how accurate the 170 is, I don't know. I don't have a thermometer in the oven. But I thought I would give it a try with these tomatoes. They are all um, aroma tomato variety, which should be much larger than they are. I've had a few that grew full size, but most of them have uh, been quite small like these. I get a finger in there to give you some kind of an idea of what you're looking at, I guess. Um, and they're growing in clusters like that, but there are more ripening every day and they're very tasty. I didn't peel them or anything like that and just cut them in half because they're so small. And if they dehydrate well, I will just use them this winter in, in soups or, or what have you. They're just on a couple of small cookie sheets and I put uh, parchment paper below them just in case they do give off some sticky juice or something, make cleanup a little easier. So if this works, I'm going to do the, some uh, plums the same way. I just tried the plums that are left on the tree and they're ripening quite nicely. So I will uh, be picking those soon and either dehydrating them in the oven or in my dehydrator. I think I'm going to like the oven if it works really well because my dehydrator makes an annoying racket that you have to listen to for hours until it's finished. Doing some more harvesting, this time more of the Espelette peppers. I'll show you in the cabin in a few minutes when I hang these uh, what I'm talking about. But I've had trouble with some of the ones, I think, as soon as they ripe, are starting to spoil. Anyway, I've had some that have spoiled. So lately I have been picking all the ripe ones, obviously. But if I see one that's you know, half green, half red. I pick it as well. That one there is mostly green. Well, no, it's got some red on it. But uh, I was wondering if they would um, ripen as they hang to dry. 
and I'll show you the bunches that are hanging. I think this is my fifth bunch, and the last couple of bunches have had green ones in, and they all turn perfectly red as they're as they're drying and they don't spoil. So that's what I'm doing to prevent spoilage. This is my one successful Hokkaido pumpkin or squash. Uh, I picked it, oh, I don't know, close to a week ago, letting it harden off. It let the stem completely dry before I take it in the house unless we start getting some really cold weather, but we have had nothing like frost yet. My rosemary plant and my bay leaf, I'm trying to decide if I'm going to bring either one of those in or if I'm going to discard them. I've been bringing them in every year, and last year I managed to bring in, I would say, spider mites and scale, both. Uh, I have both on my little um, olive tree, and I've been spraying it with insecticidal soap and sort of getting it under control. Soon I'm going to try some neem, I guess, but... I've been spraying these outside here, and I don't see spider mites anymore, so I'll keep spraying them, and before the cold weather, I'll decide if I bring them inside or not. This is that uh, globe basil going by. Um, I've left it outside since that uh, video, several videos ago, when I used it to, uh, to use it for make a sauce, I guess, tomato sauce. Anyway, I, what I want to show you is it is just starting to bloom. Now, any that I ever had before, uh, any, not globe basil, basil, first time I've ever grown it, but uh, the Genovese or the opal, the purple basil, and all those other kinds that I have tried over the years, my problem with the things have been is they bolt just as soon as they get six or seven inches tall, and I spend the summer trying to keep them from going to seed, going to flower, and these things, well, here it is, past the midpoint of September, and they're getting their first blossoms. So definitely the variety that I will be growing from now on, it has an excellent flavor. Let's go in the hoopos and have a look at the hanging esp espalettes. Well, replaying what I just said in my head, I think I said we were going in the hoopos to see the espalettes. Obviously this is the cabin, and I do have five bunches of them hanging to dry. This one I just hung, as you can see from the green that's on it. These were the same, uh, probably three, four days ago, and they've all turned red. So that does work. They will ripen. And these over here are the first ones, if I can get over any of them, that I hung. I don't know how many weeks ago that was, but they're starting to get sort of leathery. They're not dry by any means. Uh, this one at the same time, this fell off of the uh, cluster when I was putting it up and it's just been sitting on the windowsill. And it's, it's quite dry, uh, but not, you know, not dry enough that you would be able to crumble it up or, or turn it into a powder or anything yet. But they're getting there. This is another of the variety of peppers that I'm growing. And if the lady who sent me the seeds is watching, I just wanted to show these to thank you. I thought I saved the envelope that had your name on it so that I wouldn't forget and would be able to thank you. Well, so far I can't find the envelope. Anyway, the lady was somebody that I think I sent some seeds to last winter when I was giving seeds away. And she returned the favor by sending me these miniature uh, sweet pepper seeds and she said it was a seeds that she had saved for a number of years so you know they come true from from seed if they're an heirloom or not but they come true from seed and she sent two varieties red and and the uh, yellow ones they're just starting to ripen for me now I'm going to save seed and continue to grow these um, sweet peppers is something that I have an issue with I have no problem at all growing chili peppers but uh, last year I grew a large variety of sweet peppers and something attacked every one of them. There was like a little hole in the top of every one and, and inside was whoever he was devouring the inside of the pepper. Um, isn't happening at all with these and uh, I've had some eaten them already. They're a lovely sweet pepper and uh, I know when you see these small ones in the produce department of stores they go for a premium price. But uh, 
I'll be eating these probably in a salad, but I'll be saving some of the, there's quite a few left. They only have a couple of plants, but they've got a lot on them. I'm going to make a hot pepper uh, jelly, which I've done before, and I, I won't uh, make a video on it, because if you look back, I think I have two different videos on making it. But anyway, in hot pepper jelly, you use hot chilies, but as a filler, you also put in a lot of sweet peppers for, for color and, and as a filler in the jelly, so they'll be used into that. And this is another one of these Armenian cucumbers. I love them, but they sneak up on you. I didn't know there was one there that big until I just happened to look in behind something. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure how long this took. Um, I shut it off, shut the oven off overnight. I couldn't quite justify the idea of going to bed and uh, having the oven going all night. Probably would have been perfectly safe, but it bothered me, so I shut it off and turned it back on this morning for a while. Um, I would say, oh, I don't know somewhere between 12 and 15 hours. That's quite a range, I realize, but anyway, they are nicely dried. I've tasted a couple of them. It really concentrates that tomato flavor like dehydrating tomatoes always does. I thought they'd all fit in this little container, but I guess I'm going to have to get another one out. And I think I will uh, use this same method for the plums. I've been picking plums off the tree the last couple of days and eating them. There's no sense in going any further with that. I can't get any more in there. Uh, and they are really getting quite sweet and ripe, so I think I'll do the same thing sometime this week with the, with the plums. Well, to close everything off here on this video, I'm going to get out the bottle of achocha and uh, most melons that I did the uh, fermentation on. and. Uh, I've, I've been tasting them, they are quite good, but I want to show them to you. If you didn't see my original video when I started these, these are lacto-fermented pickles, dill pickles. Uh, and I have done both the uh, most melons, or cucamelon, and the achocha, both of which are substitutes for cucumbers in hotter, more southern climates. I grew mine in the, in the hoopos. My preference has ended up being the most melons. Uh, I'm sure the, what happened here, which doesn't really make any difference, but you see all the achocha have come to the top. They're hollow uh, in the center, or quite hollow. They have a cavity in the center, so they tend to float. It doesn't make any difference. They still fermented in there quite nicely. But even this size, and I'll bite into this one to see if, I'm, if I've got another one here, but... Yes, I think I do see down in there. Even, even this size has already produced that nasty black seed thing in the middle of it. So you have to remove that before you eat it. They're very good. I like them. Uh, both the achocha and the most melon have taken on a nice dill pickle, like a kosher dill pickle flavor. I uh, have both uh, dill and, and garlic in the brine. But if I were going to do the achochas again, I think the ones that you have to pick are just basically after they get started when they're not any bigger than this. I was surprised that these small ones that I picked already had the, the seed forming in them. Not that it makes any difference, you can pick that out, but it's not something you want to find in your mouth. And the most melons kept a very nice crunch. So, I think if I were to grow either one again, I would I would grow the most melons and my personal preference, and I may not grow the achochas again. But anyway, that I said I would bring these out and show them to you when they were finished and ready to eat. So, having done that, I'll say goodbye. Thank you very much for watching.